Sure. Thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. On behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks for doing the briefing. Um, I have a follow-up on Burundi, and I wanted to also uh, you know, ask you about the Yazidis and whether you view this situation as one of genocide. But in, in Burundi, there's some – some are saying that, that – I mean, obviously under, under Arusha, there was a very delicate balance sought in terms of the government, but there's, that there's been recently a reintroduction of, uh, of registration uh, of teachers and in other professions that hadn't been the case before. I don't know if you're aware of that, and do you think – is that consistent with Arusha, or do you think it would be a step backward? Also, if you're aware of the, the president of Benin was supposed to visit the country uh, as part of the AU or AUPSC uh, uh, endeavor, but has been turned away, or in any case, he's not going. Are you aware of that, and what do you think of it? And finally, just on the overall question of, the, of, of uh, ISIS and the Yazidis, is that a case of, of, of genocide in your view? Well, t t thank you very much. On, on Burundi, uh, as I said, uh, I would not mind uh, every party coming with, uh, as I said earlier, the most extremist position, including what the one you have said about. But at the end, I'm sure that wisdom will prevail. And uh, this uh, great achievement, which was made in Arusha, uh, should remain, to my view, uh, intact. We should not touch on it. I mean, that is extremely important uh, to make sure that uh, nobody is excluded. Uh, at the end of the day, we have seen 10 years of Burundi where the Tutsis and the Hutus have been sharing the power. And uh, what is extremely important is also to make sure that uh, all Burundians have access uh, to uh, economic power, not only political power, make sure that they have uh, access to employment, have access, uh, b because we sh tend to forget that when we speak about human rights, it's not only uh, civil and political. We have to make sure that the economic and social rights are also uh, respected. And that is one of the reasons why I, I hope that uh, action will be taken and that we will make every effort to stop the violence. And in that regard, I think accountability also is a key aspect which we should not uh, lose sight. Uh, we have uh, seen the African Union, which has adopted a very strong communique, uh, and uh, human rights monitors will be deployed. I mean, uh, the small office being put in place is most welcome, but that alone will not solve the problem in Burundi. We need to pay more attention to the issue of accountability. These crimes which have been committed, from the killing of uh, uh, Alphonse, who was really a close ally to President Nkurunziza, followed by the killing of former General This has, we have to identify the perpetrators of those crimes, bring them to to justice. Now concerning the Yezidi community, uh, I, I uh, spend a day with uh, members of that community, uh, including uh, the spiritual leader, Baba Sheikh. Uh, I visited the temple in Lalish. I visited the uh, Hanke camp, where I uh, interviewed uh, many uh, people who were victim of uh, abduction by ISIS. I'm particularly referring to those young girls uh, of 15 years who told me stories which were, I would say, stories of horror. Uh, they were raped. Uh, they were subjected to any form of treatment. Uh, but what is extremely important also is that uh, when I left uh, Erbil, and travel to Jordan, the Grand Muftu, Mufti of Jordan issued a fatwa uh, showing clearly that the use of this, uh, sex, this woman as uh, a sexual slave is illegal and it is anti-Islamic. So, so, so uh, and at the same time, I'm also very pleased with Baba Sheikh who issued a very strong statement warning the families of those girls to not retaliate, to not victimize them twice. So now is it a genocide? The question has been raised to me. Already uh, last uh, August 2014, after the uh, Sinjar attack, 
uh, I issued a statement. The High Commissioner for Human Rights, as you know, was sent a team which concluded, as I did, that serious crimes were being committed and that these crimes may, may amount to genocide. In August last year, I should say that the physical elements of the crime of genocide were, were there. But one needed also uh, to have the element of intent. But what I have uh, collected during my visit, uh, I can say that uh, it is likely, it is likely that uh, genocide against the Yezidi community uh, may have been committed. Uh, and I have also took on me the responsibility to help them uh, to uh, document that case and to make sure that the crimes which have been committed will be brought to justice. Uh, unfortunately, for the time being, Iraq doesn't have, do, have not yet domesticated the international crime provided in the Rome Treaty establishing the ICC, uh, which means that one needs to find another avenue uh, one avenue could be either those countries, uh, they have the foreign fighters who are with ISIS and who might have been arrested, to look also, they have to be investigated. But we should not exclude also the possibility of ref getting the case to be referred to the ICC that requires a Security Council uh, resolution. But on the other hand, Nothing prevent also the Iraqi government uh, to accept the jurisdiction of the ICC and uh, ask for the case of uh, the Yezidi to be looked by the ICC prosecutor. I have been discussing already with her, and she might, if she found that there are enough uh, elements, she can start a preliminary examination of that case, and following which she might then uh, move and take uh, ask action for prosecution. I'd like again to, uh, to thank our guests. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chen. Welcome. Thank you all. Have, have a good afternoon. Thanks.